So today we're going to be taking a look at how to create this looping ocean effect. Now it loops over both time and distance. So at some point in the animation, it actually loops back to the beginning. You just can't tell because that transition is seamless. Let's begin by dropping down a grid node. And I'm going to rename this to setup and it's much too small right now. So let's go ahead and make this a bit bigger. I'm going to go 800 by 1600. And that's a lot nicer. But we need a little bit more resolution, so I'm going to match the size. So I'm going to go 1600 by 800. And now we have a nice big ocean surface with some decent resolution. In order to deform this, we're going to need an ocean spectrum and an ocean evaluate node. So let's go ahead and drop those down. So the grid is going to go into the ocean evaluate, the left side. Now on the right side, we're going to plug in the ocean spectrum node. Now we can see we have something that kind of looks like an ocean, but it's repeating much too often. So in order to make this loop, there's two parameters that are really important. The first one is loop over time, and the second one is the grid size. Loop over time is going to control the amount of time that it takes for it to loop, and the grid size is going to control the amount of space that it takes for our ocean to loop, or the distance rather. Right now, the grid size is way too small. And so that's why we're seeing a whole bunch of repeating patches. Right now, we're going to make this bigger, so let's change it to 400. And so what this means is every 400 meters that we travel, the spectrum is going to repeat. So it's, it's essentially tileable. And we can test this out. So let's go back out to OBJ level. And let's make... And actually, before we do that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back in really quickly. And I'm going to move this grid over just so that the origin is at zero or close enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so let's go back out to OBJ level and let's make a new camera. And let's look through that camera. And what we're gonna do is just raise this up to like 10, that should be fine. And that way we can actually see the ocean spectrum. Now let's go back into the setup and let's actually Let's scale this up just so it's a bit easier to see. So I'm going to set this to like six. Yeah, that'll be easier. And it's it's looking a bit blocky. And I think that's just because the resolution exponent is a bit low. So let me just put this to like eight or nine. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot better. Now we can actually see more detail. And let's go back. And so since we set our grid size to 400, that means if we were to move the camera 400 units, it should look the same. So let's go to the translate on our watch. Well, make sure your camera is selected. Go to the or the translate and we're going to type in negative 400. And we can see that it it hasn't changed. It looks the same. And I'm just going to turn off the grid to make it easier to same or easier to see. If you bring your mouse over here to this panel and you scroll down, there's this icon right here of a picture of an eye. If you click on it, it says view memory. And this is actually a cool little thing you can do so you can take snapshots of your viewport. So I'm going to hit D really quickly and I'm going to just change the anti-aliasing because it's a bit low. So I'm going to change this from view to snapshot. And what I'm going to do is just click on this right here. And then if we click on this button right here, we could store a snapshot. And so whenever we select it, we can see it says snapshot frame one. So now if I take this camera and I go back to zero and then we can uh, turn on and off the snapshot by toggling it. And so we can see that as we turn it on and off that the spectrum is the same. So essentially every 400 meters is going to look exactly the same. Now you can notice that shifting here. And that is simply because if we look at the camera and let me go to the icon scale, just put it to like 30. Uh, the camera is, well, once it moves, like if we do negative 400, we can see that it's, it's closer towards the end. So there's not as much ocean left at the end. So that's why that is happening. But we'll talk about how to fix that later on. Uh, but for now, let's just go ahead and put our camera back to zero and let's look through it and then go back into our setup. And I have another Houdini scene. I'm just going to copy this note over and paste it in. It's just a visualizer just to help uh, see the ocean a little bit better because I'm going to be hiding the topology. All right. So right now we have it looping over space, but we also need to make it loop over time. So let's go back to the ocean spectrum node. So let's enable the loop over time. And the default of 10 is actually perfect because since we're working at 24 frames a second, 240 frames will be 10 seconds because 10 times 24 is 240. So this actually works out perfectly. And we can test this out again by using our snapshot feature. So let's go here, click this, and then take a snapshot frame one. 
and then let's go to frame 240 and if we toggle this on and off we can see that um, well it actually loops every 240 frames so that means it, the 240 first frame will actually be the same so instead let's go to frame 241 and so if we toggle on and off this we can see that frame 1 and frame 241 match since we don't actually need to play that frame two times that means having our length at 240 is perfect so instead of playing to frame 241 we'll just go back to frame one since it matches and that will give us a perfect loop keeping this in mind that means since we're looping every 10 seconds and our ocean spectrum size is 400 meters that means if we move the camera 400 meters over the course of 10 seconds it should loop around perfectly so let's go ahead and give that a try so let's go back to the camera and I'm going to set a keyframe for the Z position on frame one. And now let's go to frame 241 and I'm going to enter that in right here. And we're going to enter 400 for the value here. Actually, we need to do negative 400. So that's going forward and we can set another key by alt clicking that. And one thing, I'm going to go to the animation editor and I'm going to hit space H to bring this all into focus and select both of these and I'm going to click on the straight just so that it's not um, smooth it's not smooth motion we just want it to be linear and that should fix that and so if we go from frame 1 to frame 240 it should be the same or 241 we can see that indeed it has stayed the same but as, as we were talking about before there's that problem of the shifting right here because if we go back to frame 1 you can see that it does shift a little bit, but like I said, we're gonna we're gonna fix that, so don't worry about that. So let's look at how to fix this popping problem. So if I put the playhead towards the end when it repeats, uh, we have we still have this popping problem. So you could just cover it up with objects like boats or whatever, and then you wouldn't see it. That's one way to do it. The way I did it in the video that I made is a little bit different. So let's look at that. Let's actually go towards the end. The, let's put the playhead at the end. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another grid and I'm just going to name it Matt. And let's go inside. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change. Let's see. Let's focus on it so we can actually see it. And let's put it to X, Y plane. Perfect. And what we're going to do is we're going to move it all the way towards the end. Well, actually, let's make it bigger so we can actually see it. So I'm just going to do like a thousand by a thousand. And where is it? What? Oh, I moved it back. I didn't see that. All right, let's put that back to zero. All right, now let's move this towards the end of our ocean. All right, we need to make sure that it's not past it. It's not completely past the ocean, so like that. So let's go to the camera and make sure that it's actually blocking everything. And that is looking good. So let's go back to OBJ level. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this mat and click keep position when parenting and we're actually going to parent this to the camera and this is why we did it on the last frame because we want to make sure that this plane doesn't go past the ocean and so now we can see that as we move the playhead this this object this grid object is going to move forward along with it and what i did was uh, since we named it mat uh, that implies that we're going to use it as a mat object during render and so basically what a mat object does is it'll block everything behind it and so basically we're only rendering everything that is in front of this matte object and that way we can block out all the ocean behind it. That way when we go from frame 1 to frame 241, we're still going to be seeing the same distance. So now it'll be exactly perfect. We can test this out too. So let's make another snapshot. And then let's go to frame 241. And let's compare them together. As I toggle this back and forth, you may see a little bit of shifting in the back. That's just because we have low resolution topology. If you were to render this with higher resolution topology or to use the spectrum as displacement, you won't notice that and it'll essentially just be perfect. Actually, I just found out uh, there was actually a problem with the clipping um, on my camera. And after I fixed that, it actually is perfect. So let's see, this is two, or this is frame 241 and the snapshot is frame one. And even at low resolutions, you can see that it is 100% perfect. As I toggle back and forth, it's literally perfect. So yeah, there was just a problem with my clipping plane. But let's go ahead and actually test this out. So let's go ahead and play blast this. So we're gonna do uh, frames one to 240 and I'll be back in just a second. 
All right, now that the flipbook is finished, let's test this out. So let's just go towards the end and hit play. And we can see as it starts over, it's a seamless transition. Thanks for watching this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them below. Thank you.